Blizzard Entertainment presents A Thousand Years of War, the story of Valeria and Turalyon by Robert Brooks. Narrated by Stephen Pacey. Part 3, Shadow and Light. I understand your bargain, Elaria Windrunner. But I must ask, do you? Elaria didn't blink. Does it matter? Not to me. Elaria understood the bargain well enough, but its consequences, the price she might pay, well, that would come later. Before she could destroy the Burning Legion, she needed to escape it. Being captured had not exactly been part of her plan, but circumstances had required some improvisation. If nothing else, it had brought her close to her prize. 500 years of searching had passed. Now, her goal was within reach. We will need to act soon. I believe they have lost patience with me. Be ready, Locust Walker. Laughter came from the cage floating above her. <laughs> I have been here far longer than you, Windrunner. I am more than ready to leave. Good. Alaria had kept watch on the Legion's interrogators. Over the past few days, they had grown visibly frustrated that her will had not been broken. Time was short. I expect this will be messy. Violet light pulsed from the other creature's cage. Then our first lesson begins now. It is a simple technique. And it is very messy indeed. Listen well. Valeria closed her eyes and opened her mind. The warnings of Zira echoed through her thoughts. She ignored them. She had long since committed to this path. She only hoped she could endure it. The fighting on Argus had ceased for a moment. That would not last. High Exarch Turalyon strode through the hall behind the skirmish line. Be ready. Hold for the first wave, then fall back. We need to draw them all the way in. He passed Lathraxian. The Nathrazim looked back at him. Can we give them enough time? Turalyon said nothing, and that was answer enough. Lathraxian grunted. Uh, well, we can sting the Legion's pride at least. A rumble filled the hallways. Heavy footfalls and clattering weapons. It grew louder. Turalyon gripped his sword. Light, how he wished Alaria was still here at his side. Here they come. Snarling demons surged through the small doorway. They were led by three dreadlords. Lathraxian met them with a laugh, blade against blade. <laughs> Good to see you again, brothers. Light and Fells swirled together in spectacular fury. They were fighting in a narrow corridor, a choke point. The light could hold against superior numbers for the moment. A demon broke through the front line, but Turalyon's sword took care of it. He glanced behind him. His artificers were still working furiously on the rift constructs in the main chamber. Is it done? He called out. One of them yelled back, voice pinched with frustration. We're out of time. Fall back and open the rift. Turalyon turned to his army and raised his voice. His soldiers calmly obeyed, stepping backward in unison, handling the scattered fools that tried to charge in alone. They backed out of the hallway and into a wide, tall room, the chamber where the Burning Legion kept its rift barriers. After suffering centuries of raids, the Burning Legion had finally learned how to prevent the Army of the Light from opening rifts into Argus for hit-and-run attacks. These barriers had stopped them cold. Launching this attack had been a desperate ploy. None in Turalyon's army knew how the barriers worked or how to destroy them. But it was a risk they all had been willing to take. Success would have given them access to Argus once again. They might have threatened to capture the world's soul and sown panic within the Burning Legion's ranks. They might even have forced the Legion to stop its invasion of Azeroth. But they hadn't succeeded. And now, every demon on Argus was closing in. Lothraxion was right. 
All that was left was to sting the Legion's pride. But Argus was within the twisting nether. Every enemy the army felled would stay down forever. The army made a show of retreating deep into the chamber. The demons surged out of the corridors, rushing into the open room, so intent on pursuing Turalyon's forces that they did not notice the two paladins waiting, one on either side of the door. When Turalyon could see nothing but demons packing the hallway, he gave his order. No! The army stopped retreating. The two paladins at the door stepped back into the hallway, arms extended. Holy power erupted. The demons before them shrieked as the wrath of the light consumed them all. Those that had already made it into the chamber turned around in shock, only to have Turalyon and his strike team fall upon them. The battle was quick, unfair, just as Turalyon had planned. One of the paladins, a commander named Rosales, limped as he exited the hallway. The other never emerged at all. Turalyon muttered a prayer for him, and then raised his voice to the others. It's time to go, he said. The paladin's transport was still active. It had needed to physically drop onto Argus, but now that it was here, it could briefly force open a rift to the Xenadar. The army ducked through the narrow opening, crossing a vast distance in an instant back to safety. Turalyon was the last to step through. The transport's rift didn't close. Demons were racing towards it. Shut it down, he told Rosales. A gust of wind blew into the Xenadar, and the rift finally snapped shut. The paladin blinked, then shrugged. My apologies, High Exarch. Something was blocking it. Not a surprise. The Legion would love to invade this place, Turalyon said, his heart heavy. It was the last time they would ever sneak onto Argus. There was no doubt. The Legion would not be taken unawares by Xenadar transports again. For now, the Army of the Light was stuck here, hiding in the chaos of the Twisting Nether. Lithraxian clapped his leader on his shoulders. A good fight, Turalyon. You commanded us well today. Turalyon clasped his hand. You fought admirably. Everyone did. Tell them I said so. I will, High Exarch. Turalyon watched him go. Yes, the army had lost only one of its own against overwhelming odds, but the Legion had won. The thousand-year war on the Legion had accomplished much. It had freed prisoners from fates worse than death. It had delayed the demon's invasion of Azeroth by decades. And now it was over. Ended not with a triumphant last stand, but with a small skirmish and a wall the Army of the Light could not breach. Turalyon wearily walked deep into the Xenadar to find Zira. He would tell her of his failure, and he would hear nothing in return. She had foretold that the champions fighting on Azeroth were the only hope of defeating the Burning Legion. Her mind was utterly focused on helping them fend off the invasion. That hurt Turalyon, perhaps more than anything. She had known that he would fail, and she had not tried to help him overcome that fate. Light, he hoped she would succeed. Until she did, he could do nothing. The apprentice Inquisitor floated above his dais, looming over Alaria as the bonds of fell magic sent needles of pain shooting through her mind. Tell me how to find the Xenadar, or you will suffer for all eternity. The Burning Legion had shown such creativity in its torments when Alaria first arrived on Niskara. The demons were expert interrogators, capable of inventive ways of cracking open defiant wills. There had been moments when she had genuinely feared she might succumb to the agony, or, at the very least, let slip that she had wanted to be brought to this prison. But this, this was downright lazy. It was hard to conceal her contempt. The High Inquisitor had talent for his craft. This apprentice had no imagination. The Inquisitor held out his hand. Long, taloned fingers unfurled to reveal a small, polished black crystal in his palm. 
Aleria had seen its like before. It was a soul stone. This is a gift from Kil'jaeden. It will be a reward to someone you met a thousand years ago. Do you understand me, Windrunner? If you do not obey, your soul will belong to that demon forever. As a bauble around its neck, Alaria muttered. Ah, I see you understand perfectly. But maybe that's what you want. When it arrives, your soul and your lovers will be reunited. Screaming together in agony until the stars are dust. He clasped his hands in mock adoration. How romantic that will be. Alaria did not respond. The Inquisitors sighed with disappointment. <sighs> Do you need more convincing first? Very well. He waved a hand, and the bonds of Fell disappeared. She fell to the ground, feigning exhaustion. He slowly walked toward her, conjuring some new torment he would never get a chance to use. She took a deep breath. Time to settle our bargain, Lucas Walker, she said. Aleria shoved herself to her feet. She had no physical weapons. The Inquisitors had blocked her from the light. But the Legion, as cunning as it was, had not imagined that a warrior of the Army of the Light had embraced the Shadow. Dark power surged through her veins. The voices of the Void returned to her, giddy and raving. She followed the Locust Walker's lesson. One hand reached toward the Inquisitor, the other toward the Locust Walker's cage. Both exploded into fragments. The demon did not even have time to scream. Alaria waited, listening. There was no alarm, no cries of anger. The Inquisitor had been so confident that he had not brought guards, nor had he summoned any guardian eyes. None had witnessed this. The Locust Walker emerged from the ruins of his cage. He was an ethereal, a creature of pure energy. When he was captured, his wrappings had been destroyed. His form was a mass of irregular power. Well struck, Valeria. I've had worse students. She looked around. Briefly, she considered searching for her bow, but she knew she did not have time. The Inquisitor's absence would be noticed before long. We need to go. Yes, we do. Shadow magic flowed from him. A portal ripped open the air in front of them. I need to recover. You need to train. I know where we can do both. Aleria hesitated. She knelt next to the Inquisitor's remains. The Ethereal shivered with impatience. What are you waiting for? She held up the Soul Stone. This one was meant for me. I fear there is another, meant for someone I care about very much. The Ethereal's words held no pity. Our bargain does not require me to wait until you are ready. Decide which is more important. Now. Alaria locked a furious stare on him, but there was no decision to make. He is hiding in the Twisting Nether. I do not know how to find him. You will, if he's still alive when you're done. Then let us go. She stepped through the portal. The twisting skies of Nistara vanished. In their place was nothing. No sound. No wind, no ground. Nothing but an oppressive silence. Only the glow of the ethereal provided any light at all. Alaria floated freely. Until you learn how to survive here, it is best that you do not attract too much attention. Welcome to the Void, Alaria Windrunner. Where do we begin? Shall we start with more killing? No, that comes naturally to you. Perhaps something more fundamental. He pulsed, and shadow began to writhe in front of him. Let's talk about maintaining your sanity. The Void will do everything it can to shatter your will. That sounds like a problem. Quite. Wake up, Turalyon. Wake up! Turalyon opened his eyes. 
There was a sharp pain in his chest. He ignored it and sat up. What's wrong? Lithraxian was standing in the hallway. I found a dead body. What? Down at the bottom of the Xenadar. It's a woman, Turalyon. I'm sorry, he said. Turalyon jumped to his feet. Tell me it isn't her. Lithraxian said nothing, and that was answer enough. His expression was filled with sorrow. Turalyon's heart sank. Take me there. They set off immediately, heading deeper into the vessel. Turalyon tried to keep a firm grip on his emotions, but his thoughts were a maelstrom whirling in his head. It had been centuries since he had last seen Aleria. He had mourned her. He had believed her to be lost forever. But this new pain in his chest pulsed with each heartbeat. Light help him. Maybe he had sensed her death. Maybe... No. Turalyon drew himself up. Now was not the time for grief. Not until he knew for certain. How could her body be here in the Xenadar? They arrived in the vessel's Hall of Crystals, the place from where the Xenadar's power flowed. None of the artificers were at their stations. With the ship in hiding, there was no need for them to maintain a constant presence. Lothraxian led Turalyon into the back corner. Over there, Hayaxark. Behind the last crystal structure, obscured by shadows, Turalyon saw a body. I know. He breathed. He rushed over and kneeled, reaching out to her. His breath caught. It wasn't Alaria. It wasn't a woman. It wasn't even a corpse. Lying on the floor was Lothraxian. His chest was moving, his eyes were wide, words hissed out between motionless lips. Behind you. Turalyon rose to his feet, turning. He opened himself to the light, inviting its thunderous power down as righteous judgment upon the imposter who... The pain in his chest flared, stabbing deep into his soul. Turalyon couldn't move. The light slipped from his grasp. He couldn't even say a word. He could barely think. He teetered, tilted, and then collapsed onto the floor, unable to twitch. The creature, who looked like Lothraxian, sauntered over to him, grinning. I told you we would meet again, human. With a simple gesture, the creature dispelled its disguise. The Eridar assassin from Draenor leaned in close, showing Turalyon its dagger. There was a small drop of red blood on it, mixed with vile poisons that smoked and sparked. I could have ended this while you slept, High Exarch. But then I thought, preserving your soul will take time, and I will need a quiet place to finish the job. The Eridar turned toward Lothraxian. And then I realized how pleased Kil'jaeden will be to see you again, traitor. Lothraxian was beginning to move. The poison must have been wearing off. Light will burn you. The assassin buried the dagger in Lothraxian's forearm, and the Nathrezim went still. Don't worry. You will live. You will witness your high exarch, one of the bright lights of Azeroth becoming my prize trophy. The Eridar held a small black soul stone between two fingers, showing it to both of them. Then it turned back to Turalyon. I want you to know that Alaria Windrunner is alive. The Burning Legion has her in a cage. Once I have collected your soul, I will collect hers. You will be together forever with me, just as I promised. In every moment, you will feel her suffering as keenly as your own. The soul stone floated into the air above Turalyon. He summoned every ounce of his will to resist the poison that had rendered him helpless. He tried to fight, he tried to scream, he tried to wield the light, he tried to call out to Zira. Not a sound emerged, not a finger moved.
The assassin began its work with a chuckle. The shadow will heal your scars. The shadow will show you your destiny. Alaria was not amused. Stay out of my memories. Laughter filled the air around her. <laughs> I couldn't, even if I tried. I will know everything about you when this is done. Does that inspire second thoughts? No. Then let us begin. You have been a remarkable student thus far, Alaria Windrunner. But you have barely touched the shadow. To truly understand your destiny, you must become one with it. The ethereal's power pulsed softly. And that is where the danger lies. You see the Void as an enemy. It sees you the same way. For now. Its very nature is hostile to what you know as life and sanity. The blackness around them seemed to shift. But without the Shadow, you would have never been alive at all. The darkness touched Aleria. The voices she had learned to ignore became loud. So, so loud. Aleria couldn't push them away. She couldn't resist them. But the Locust Walker kept speaking, guiding her through the storm. You already understand one truth, Aleria. The light is blind. It cannot see the whole of destiny because it alone is not responsible for it. Your path was shrouded by shadow, and thus it was hidden from the light. The strength of his words gave her an anchor to cling to as the torrents of darkness tossed her about. Now understand another truth. The shadow is just as blind. It saw your fate intertwining with its own and it rejoiced. But it too sees only a fragment of destiny. But that fragment is unlike anything you've known before. Aleria began to see visions. Terrible, terrible visions. She saw the light moving through the cosmos like a ravenous predator. She saw it touch the minds of Azeroth's mortals, a touch that corrupted them forever. She saw generations live and die in invisible chains, bound to a force that granted them fleeing moments of peace in exchange for absolute obedience. She saw war. She saw the forces of the light striking back against the void. She saw darkened worlds burning in holy fire. She saw millions of creatures encased in luminous crystals the size of mountains, sustained by the light and unable to die. Warriors of the light were monsters, corrupting and consuming everything they touched. On and on and on it went until she could not even comprehend it all. Lies, she whispered. These are all lies. Sear that into your heart, the Locust Walker said. Know that and never forget it. I do not... what? The Locust Walker kept her firmly afloat. You have known the Shadow as nothing but horrors. The Shadow sees the light in the same way. Neither viewpoint is true. Neither is wrong. The roar of the Void nearly drowned him out. The masters of the Void were clawing at her mind. She barely fought them off. The Light seeks one path and shuns all others as lies. The Shadow seeks every possible path and sees them all as truth. More visions, possible futures. She saw Zira, the Mother of Light, declaring her a heretic and calling for her death. She saw her blood on Turalyon's sword. She saw Arator calling an army of paladins to hunt her down, only to fall with her arrows in his throat. She saw herself kneeling before the one who slumbers beneath Azeroth's waves. She saw herself killing it and taking its place, leading a throng of horrors to consume every nation. As she swam in the shadow, all these visions seemed true, at first. Slowly, she began to see the difference between the Shadow's memories, the Shadow's plans, and the Shadow's desires. And from that, destiny. She saw what the Light could not. 
she saw what even the shadow could not because, yes, it was just as blind. She saw terrible choices. She saw noble betrayals. She saw victory in a way she could scarcely comprehend. And among all of that, she saw countless events that would never happen. The lies of the void were strong, intoxicating, but they quickly collapsed. Perhaps one day she would fall to madness. Perhaps one day she would betray her allies. She was capable of it. But she would never, not in any possibility, not in any circumstance, harm her son. She would never lift a finger against Arator. Even if he killed her for what she had become, she would accept it gladly. The weight of that truth kept her afloat. And she could feel the shadow's confusion. It did not understand the bonds between mortals. It did not understand that there were some things that could not be corrupted. Another truth emerged. This was happening too soon. She was swimming in the shadow before her destiny demanded it. You are ready, Elaria. Every ounce of power out there will be at your command. Dive deeply into it. Your mind will yet be your own. She was indeed ready, but it was not yet time. She had witnessed herself jumping from a cliff, peacefully surrendering to the long fall. When the time came, there would be no choice and no alternative. Now she could still escape, and her destiny demanded that she must. Alaria tried to make sense of it all. She searched the Void's knowledge for answers. When none came, she instinctively reached out for the light. The two forces collided in a blinding jolt of pain. But she glimpsed a truce. Turalyon screaming silently as his soul was ripped from his body. That was neither the past nor the future. It was happening now. She knew it. Let me out! Let me out! We are not done, Elaria. No matter how terrifying it seems, you must... Elaria lashed out. All of the dark power filling her slammed into the Locust Walker. With a roar of surprise, he let go of her mind. Gasping, she flung the shadow away. She was free again, floating in the darkness. The Locust Walker loomed in front of her, furious. Coward! I should have expected no less from a mortal. He was gathering power, intending to strike back at her. Alaria ignored him. She pulled out the soul stone she had taken from the Inquisitor on Niskara. The black crystal was now glowing green. I knew it. Light help me. I knew it was real. The Locust Walker paused. What did you see? Turalyon is about to die. The Ethereal snatched up the stone and studied it carefully. His power delved into it, and he laughed. <laughs> you have made a very determined enemy, Windrunner. She wasn't sure if he was talking about the Assassin or himself. The Void will use your love against you. You understand that, yes? Turalyon may die one day, but he cannot die this day or I am lost. The ethereal shimmered. Remember what I said about truth and lies. That truth did not come from the void. That truth was changing the void. He stared into the soul stone again. Interesting. You may have a unique destiny, Elaria Windrunner. Go to him. I've taught you how. He returned the soul stone to her. Elaria hesitated. I do not know where the Zenadar is. Yes, you do. You hold its location in your hand. It took her a moment to understand. She could see the Eridar's work in this stone because the two stones were linked. The assassin had intended to have them together around its neck. She didn't need to know where the Eridar was because she knew where the other stone was. She looked back at the Locust Walker. I suppose our bargain is ended, then. Oh, I believe we will meet again, he mused. 
she reached through the Soul Stone, used what the Locust Walker had taught her. The portal to the Xenadar opened instantly. The light could not save Turalyon. He had accepted that, but the light could still offer him comfort. Without it, Turalyon would have been exposed to the full, raw agony of having his soul stripped away piece by piece. He kept his eyes closed, not wanting to see his own spirit leaving his body. Even so, the pain was nearly unbearable. The light shine upon us all, he tried to say. The sounds of the assassin's spells filled his ears. He did not know if the words escaped his mouth. He kept praying anyway. Let evil flee before righteousness. Let the innocent live in peace. Let the day come when none need fear. For that day, I give my life gladly. His tormentor must have heard him. I wonder how many years it will be before you beg me for mercy, knowing that I will not grant you even a moment of it. Turalyon felt a breath of cold wind cross his face. It smelled of nothing, as though it had never before touched anything that lived. And then he heard a scream. <coughs> he thought it was his own voice finally giving in to the pain. It wasn't. It was the assassin. How? How are you here? You were right. We were destined to meet again. Turalyon opened his eyes. It was her, Alaria, wreathed in darkness. He did not feel the light within her. The assassin shrieked, brandishing a dagger. The demon leapt at her, slashing for her throat. She did not even lift a hand. Inky black smoke coalesced in midair, forming a curved spike. It slammed into the assassin's chest. Turalyon saw the tip of the smoke appear out of the creature's back, spraying blood. The Eridar fell to its knees, eyes wide, mouth moving soundlessly. Alaria stepped forward. Our souls as baubles around your neck. Is that the fate you saw? I have seen another. Now she lifted her hands. Dark magic gathered between them. The assassin, bug-eyed and panting, simply vanished. Reality folded in upon the demon, and it was gone. Alaria knelt next to Turalyon, staring at the soul stone hovering above his head. I cannot fix this. Not on my own. She turned to Lathraxian. I can sense the poison in your veins. I am sorry. This will hurt. She curled her fingers. The Thraxian convulsed, screaming. Turalyon could see foul green smoke trailing beneath the Nathrazim's claws. Blood and sizzling liquid dripped to the floor. She was ripping the poison out of his body through his skin. All at once, it was done, and the Thraxian could move again. He was on his feet in an instant, breath ragged. Hilaria, what happened to you? Save Turalyon, please. I need to finish this. That demon threatened my son. The creature ran. It ran and ran and ran, sliding between realms, dancing between the twisting nether and the void. It ripped Alaria's spike free from its chest. The weapon dissolved into nothing. The Eridar was gasping in pain. Each step came with a chant. Have to get away! Have to get away! Have to get away! The demon had gone by many names in its life. Now it answered only to the task Kiljaden had given it. Eradication. Bred from birth to ascend above its brethren. Molded from age to age. Shaped, tormented, the demon's skills had been enhanced. Even the other Eridar feared it. And why wouldn't they? It could hide between dimensions. It could shift appearances on a whim. It could spot those whose fates threatened the Burning Legion. Then it had been killed on Draenor by her. 
kill Jaden had punished it, and then he had made the demon more powerful than ever. The process had taken centuries, and now it had pleased kill Jaden for the Eridar to kill him, Turalyon, and after him it had been promised her. It had been given the means to preserve them and torment them forevermore. But she had escaped, and she, she, she had changed. She knew the ways of oblivion. She knew how to command the final death. Have to get away! Have to get away! Have to cry off! Dark matter wrapped around its neck. The demon screamed as it was yanked from its dance and pulled back onto the Xenodar, back into the twisting nether. The Eridar was on its feet in a second, hissing through its fanged teeth. Its daggers whirled in both hands and it sliced away the bonds of shadow. With a desperate laugh, it hurled its poison blades at the woman. She had pulled it here, to the one place where it could die, and the blade stopped in midair. She stepped past them. Kill Jaden! Save me! Is he watching? Aleria walked forward, closing the distance. Are you a favorite pet of his? The demon conjured more daggers, howling with fear. They all vanished before they could hit her. She kept walking toward it, step after step after step. Another spike slammed into its left shoulder. Its right arm continued to throw daggers. The Eridar could think of nothing else to do. Save me! It cried again. Another spike. The demon's other arm went limp. I know what you fear, she said. I know what the Burning Legion fears. I know what drove your masters to their terrible crusade. The Eridar could feel Kiljaden's disappointment. He had heard its cries and ignored them. And then she was standing before it. The demon fell to its knees. It couldn't even lift its arms to beg for mercy. All it could do was wheeze out its last prayer. Please, please, please. She knelt in front of it, meeting its gaze. All hope died with her words. You promised to kill my son. Her dagger slipped easily into its throat. The demon made not a sound. It just stared at her with unblinking eyes as its life drained away. This is an easy end, she said softly. I could have given you to the Masters of the Void, but they might have turned you, and I would be done with this. Behind her, on the other end of the hall, were Turalyon and Lothraxian, watching. The demon saw astonishment in their eyes. It saw fear. Then it all faded away. It was a relief. Turalyon hurt. His entire body ached. It wasn't only physical pain. His thoughts, his very soul pulsed with agony. But he had survived. The soul stone lay motionless on the ground, inert, nothing but a trophy now. Lothraxian helped him to his feet. Aleria was returning. It was a long walk across the crystal hall. He watched her every step, mind numb, barely able to think. She stopped in front of him. She looked exhausted. It is good to see you again, she said. He wanted to tell her the same. He wanted to tell her that he loved her and that nothing would ever change that. It would have been true. But he couldn't find the words. Not yet. She seemed to understand. My destiny does not end with the light. It ends in darkness. I have known that for a long, long time. She met his gaze without blinking. And if I do not follow that path, I put you, Arator, and all of Azeroth at risk. Please believe me. Lothraxian spoke up. I have known darkness, Valeria. I have seen lost creatures. You are not one of them. You have not crossed the threshold. I will. One day, she said simply. 
The Nathrezim scoffed. In the Legion's name, I did countless things that cannot be forgiven. I committed genocide over and over and over again. The Light redeemed me nonetheless. I will not give up on you, Hilaria Windrunner. Not that easily. Turalyon studied her face. He knew her too well. She appreciated what Lathraxian was saying, but she didn't believe it. Hilaria, go. Leave. Pain flashed across her eyes. No. I wish you could stay. Turalyon's words held no anger, only agonizing truth. Zira will not allow that. She will... You have to leave, Hilaria, while you still can. You don't know what she will do. I know precisely what she will do. And I know what will come after that. A great and terrible presence filled the hall. Turalyon felt holy wrath coalescing around Alaria. He stepped next to her. Zira, please. He said. Show mercy. I warned her what would happen if she tolerated the shadow. And now, she would defile this place. Lothraxian knelt before the whirling power of the Mother of Light. Hear my words. Lady Hilaria Windrunner came back to save us, knowing that she would not be accepted here. Courage, honor, selflessness. These virtues still reside in her heart. Virtues count for nothing if you stray from the path the Light has chosen for you. And yet, despite her anger, Zira hesitated. Turalyon opened his mind to her, letting her see his doubts, anguish, and resolve. I beg you, Zira, do not harm her. Zira's merciless regard examined his soul and then turned back to the woman he loved. Valeria Windrunner, will you renounce the void and pledge obedience to the light? Valeria spoke without fear. I will fight the Burning Legion until it is dust. Answer my question. We walk different paths, but we are not enemies. I have seen it. I will join the Army of the Light in the final battle against the Legion. And together, we will bring the demons down. No, Valeria. You will not. You will remain here, imprisoned, until you accept the path of righteousness once again. I will not allow you to taint what I have foreseen. Do what you must. Alaria did not resist, even as members of the Army of the Light led her away to be imprisoned elsewhere in the Xenadar. Turalyon watched her go. She looked back at him with a reassuring smile. Lothraxian waited there with him. She will come back. Do not lose faith. I still trust in the Light's purpose. But I still trust Alaria. I trust her as much as I ever have. He looked at Lothraxian. Does that make me a fool? If so, then we're both fools, brother. Turalyon sat down as healers came to tend his wounds. He scarcely noticed them. His thoughts were aflame. His destiny was shrouded. He could not see what would happen. But there was a refuge from his turmoil, a calm center. No matter what happened, he would always trust her. He would always fight for her. And she would do the same for him. He was certain of it. That gave him peace.